I'm assuming here that you have a knowledge of Faraday's law and Lenz's law. If not, these are explained in another video. Transformers are a commonplace part of most of our electronic and electrical machines. Here you can see a couple of transformers on this circuit board. Basically, a transformer consists of two coils, each wrapped around a magnetic soft iron core. The coils have no electrical connection. The connection is made via a magnetic field through this common iron core. Transformers come in all shapes and sizes. This is a power supply for a small razor. And this, a little larger because it will deliver a higher current, is a power supply for some decorative lights. We can often see transformers on poles outside our houses, or perhaps in big installations near factory groups of houses or near power stations. The purpose of a transformer is to change the voltage of a supply. It will be either a step-up transformer to increase the voltage or a step-down transformer to reduce it. As I've said before, it consists of two coils, both wrapped around a core of material like soft iron, which is easily made magnetic. The electricity supply is input to one coil, and that is called the primary coil. The output from the other, that coil is called the secondary coil. Here you can see a voltmeter connected across the output or secondary terminals of the small transformer we had before. As the dry cell is connected across the primary coil, there's a pulse of electricity shown on the voltmeter. As it's disconnected, there is another pulse in the opposite direction. There are only pulses when it's connected or disconnected, not when it remains on or off. If I turn the transformer around, connecting the dry cell onto what was once before the secondary coil, but now we've made it our primary coil, there is, as I switch on and off, still pulses of electricity on the output on the voltmeter. A transformer is a reversible machine, depending upon whether you want it to step up or step down the voltage. No matter whether the transformer is a step up or step down, the way it works is much the same. When a current flows in the primary coil, a magnetic field is created which flows all the way around the core. This magnetic field cuts through the secondary coil and induces an EMF in it. When the current is switched off, the field collapses and again an EMF is induced in the secondary coil, but this time, because the field is collapsing, in the opposite direction. As the current is reversed, the field created is in the opposite direction. Again, an EMF is created in the secondary coil as it cuts through it, and again created in the secondary coil as the field is switched off and collapses. An EMF is only created in the second coil if the current is being switched off in the primary or switched on. To continue to do this would be tedious, and therefore we use a current which is changing all the time. We use an alternating current. All our power stations produce alternating current, not direct current, and they have to do so, so that the electricity can be distributed. And it can only be distributed by using transformers, as we'll explain in a few minutes. The other key design features of a transformer are in the core. It is made of soft iron, which has high magnetic permeability and low hysteresis loss. In other words, it requires very little energy to magnetize and demagnetize it. But this core is laminated, and it's laminated to avoid eddy currents. You can see the laminations quite clearly on this small transformer that we were using before. A step-up transformer has more turns of wire on the secondary, or the output coil, than it has on the primary coil. Working out the way the voltage changes is fairly straightforward. If it has twice as many turns on the secondary as the primary, the voltage is doubled. Four times as many turns, the voltage is four times. Nineteen times as many turns, the voltage is nineteen times. In other words, the ratio of the input voltage to the output voltage is the same as the ratio of the number of turns on the coils. 
The physics and maths of the step-down transformer are exactly the same. The ratio of the voltages, voltage on the secondary over the voltage of the primary, is exactly the same as the ratio of the number of turns of coil on the secondary to the number of turns on the primary. Although the voltage is increased, the energy input and energy output to a transformer are almost the same. As the voltage changes, the current also changes. If the voltage is 10 times higher, the current will fall to one tenth of the value. Transformers are not perfectly efficient, but they are very efficient, often over 99% efficient. A small amount of energy is lost through heating in the coils and heating in the core through magnetic hysteresis. Because of their very high efficiency, broadly speaking, the power input and the power output are the same. That is, the primary current multiplied by the primary voltage is equal to the secondary current times the secondary voltage. All around the home, offices and factories, different electrical machines require different voltages. But the key importance of transformers is in the electricity supply industry. This diagram can be downloaded as a PDF. But let's have a quick look at it now. Electricity is usually produced in a power station at a few hundred volts. To distribute it from there, it is stepped up to a very high voltage, perhaps up to 400,000 volts. This is for long distance transmission, and very large transformers would be required to step up such a large amount. From there, the voltage is likely to be stepped down in stages, for the local grid down to perhaps 100,000 volts. To factories and businesses via a substation, perhaps to a few hundred volts. But that is too high a value for domestic consumers. The voltage to them varies depending on the country between about 100 and 250 volts and will be stepped down locally, often using small transformers on poles near a group of houses. To explain why all this has to be done, Let's go through a couple of simple calculations. Suppose we have a supply line from a power station, many kilometers long, with a resistance of 50 ohms. The consumer has a power requirement of 100 kilowatts, that's 100,000 watts, at a voltage of 200 volts. If the power is supplied to the line at a voltage of 200 volts, then the current required to be pushed through that power line is 500 amps. That's from the equation power equals current times voltage. Now when electric current travels through a conductor it causes heating due to the resistance and the heating is equal to I squared R where I is the current and R is the resistance. I squared R in this case is 500 squared times 50 which is 12,500,000 watts far in excess of the power that the customer actually requires. A huge amount of energy would be wasted in the transmission. It would not be economical to supply it. Let's consider another option, where a transformer is used to increase the voltage to 20,000 volts. That is 100 times greater, so that the current required is 100th of the original. In other words, it is 5 amps. The power lost in the line in this instance, I squared R, is 5 squared times 50, which is 1250 watts. A step-down transformer is needed to reduce the voltage for the customer. However, the power loss is only 1% of the total used, a fairly negligible amount. If we did not use alternating current together with transformers, all consumers would have to be within a mile or two of a power station. And that clearly is not feasible for an electricity supply industry. Thank you for watching.